first day. And then on the Shabbat, we were free. We just worshiped him. You know, there was healings. There was miracles. There was different things that was going on. And y'all, the biggest miracle was y'all was drawing us back to him. You know, and there was excitement. We were excited. Y'all wants us to go back to, to that excitement that we had. You know, that freshness. Not, not to say that everybody don't have that anymore, but I'm just saying that as a whole, this is what God wants us to go back to. You know, just having that excitement to where we're, where we're like David. Hallelujah to where, where David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of Yah. That's how we have to be out. Oh, is, that, is it open? Is there service going on tonight? Is there service today? Is there service on the Shabbat? I want to get down there. I'm not going to miss it. The doors don't even have to be open. I'm going to be outside praising him until somebody comes with a key to open it up. That's how he wants us. He wants us to be excited again for him. Hallelujah. And this is the, that's what I've been craving for myself. You know, when you fast, consecrate, pray, it should all hey, bring message, whatever, preach. Everything is always to the, uh, to the first, it's first person. First. It's you first. It's so when I'm doing it, it's me first. I'm the one that's going to benefit. I'm the one that's going to be rebuked. I'm the one that wh whatever he has, uh, before he dishes it out to anybody else, I got to hold the plate first. And when, what, that goes for everybody, whatever it is. So don't think that when y'all gives you a message, don't think, oh, this is for somebody else. If you receive from uh, from a message uh, from even someone else, when, when the lights go on, that means it went on for you. Because what God says to one, he says to all. And if he has a message for someone else and you got it, it must have been to you too. It must have been for you first. You know, if you don't want to got it because y'all knows how to reach everyone. You know, so he can, just like you're reaching you, he's reaching that other person. You know, he doesn't have to use us. He doesn't have to. It's a privilege to us to be used of him. We all want to be used of him. We don't want to, we want to be those good and faithful servants, the good stewards with everything that he's allowed us to hold in his hands because he does not have to use us. He can use someone else. I don't want to be the unfaithful steward with what he's given me. Hallelujah. And another thing is I don't want to neglect anything just because I heard somebody else say it's not for me. We've been doing, doing that for years. They told us, uh, to be dignified. They told us all these different things and we paid attention to everyone else. You know, but then when y'all start doing something in us or speaking to us, we quench his ruach. Because somebody said, because the flesh of someone else uh, moved their lips to tell us something. Instead of going with our common sense and the ruach that he's given us. Y'all wants to speak to us all. We all are supposed to seek our own individual uh, uh, personal relationships with him. We're supposed to all seek him, get to know him. Hallelujah. Galatians 4, commencing at the first verse. This is something he's given me. I'm going to try to go through it, but I need you all to get the understanding of what the word says. Out of all I get, and get understanding. But that's the focus is understanding today because anytime you read Paul, Saul, anytime you read his word, it's a lot of things that's been twisted in the past. I keep telling you all, we all have to forget everything we were taught, all of it, and then come to him as a, a, a babe, as a child. You know, come to him as a child. And uh, my wife and I was talking the other day when she was uh, t telling me how it clicked that to her that. Uh, how all the things that she's learned, you know, it really don't add up to nothing. And we were talking about Paul, how Paul, he, he was a, the Pharisee of Pharisees. He, he knew all the things that Pharisees knew. He knew all the things that Sadducees knew. He knew all the things that the scribes. He was at the top. His education was top notch. You couldn't go any higher. Brought up under Gaius. You know, he had the best, the highest education. It was a Roman citizen. But yeah, when, when he started learning uh, the ways of Mashiach and learning who he was, he said, all oh, everything I learned, everything that they put in me, 
I count that as dumb. It's no benefit to it. It's no benefit. So we have to, when we come to him, now we don't throw out the ba uh, baby with the bathwater. But all the things that we, 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 we've learned, you know, we have to become as a child. Don't, I'm not going to say become a baby. Become as a child. A child knows how to decipher truth better than most adults. You know, when you, like, I keep saying, you tell a child, uh, uh, if I told the child that this shirt was blue, the child would look at me like I'm crazy. If I tell an adult that this shirt is blue, you know, I can probably uh, get an adult to believe that this shirt is blue. That's why we have so much confusion going on. All I have to do is say that, oh, uh, I have my doctor's degree in this, and uh, I've been certified in this, and, and uh, I'm a, a bishop of this, and, and then I'll say, okay, he, he has all these accolades. So he, he, uh, he's been approved by a man, so what he says must be true. But we have to forget everything. Forget everything. Don't, don't lose it, but forget it. When it comes to Yah, you become a child again. Because, see, the enemy just wanted us to learn uh, him through a different uh, lens. You know, and the lens that he has, uh, wants you to see through is distorted. It's, it's not clear. You know, so uh, we get, and then he wants us to listen to others so that we can stray off. And God's lifting the veil. He's saying, no, take upon me my yoke and learn, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hallelujah. And if any man lack wisdom, let him ask. Because he will freely, freely give it to us. Galatians 4. <clears throat> now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, deferreth nothing from a servant. Though, be, though he be Lord, uh, and I'm reading out of King James, so you all don't get mixed up just because I'm using these words, but everybody don't understand Hebrew. You know, uh, we should all learn it because this is the, the book was actually written in Hebrew. But until then, you know, Paul said, I become all things to all flesh. So for, for the benefit of winning. Hallelujah. So it says, um, I'm going to read that again. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, deferred nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under the tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father even so we when we were children were in bondage under the elements of the world that sounds like the things that we are in but when the fullness of time was come and I'll say Yah sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. So if you know anything about adoption, it means that you're being brought in to become a son. You're not a son, but you're being brought in to become a son. And because you were son, you are sons, Yah has sent forth the, the Ruach, the spirit of his son, into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son. So he changed us from servants to a son. And if a son, then an heir of Yah through Mashiach. How be it then, when ye know, knew not Yah, ye did ser service unto him, unto them which by nature are no gods, no, no good well Elohims. But now after that ye are known of Yah, or rather are known of Yah, how turn ye again to the weak and uh, burglary burglar elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Ye observe days and months. He's saying, ye observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you uh, labor in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am. For I am as ye are, and ye have not injured me at all. Ye know how, through infirmity of the flesh, I preach the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despise not. 
nor rejected, but received me as but received me as an angel of Yah, even as Mashiach Yahusha. Where is then the blessedness he spake of? For I bear you record that if it if it had been possible, you would have, have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? So he's asking, he said, at one point, if, if I was blind, you would have gave me your eyes, your own eyes. So he said, but now am I become your enemy just because I'm telling you truth? I'm trying to uh, uh, help you. I'm trying to save you. But I, am I become your enemy because I am telling you truth? They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, would you exclude you? Would they exclude you that he might affect them? But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. And not only when I am present with you, my little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you and now and change my voice. For I stand in doubt of you. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye, do, do ye hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by the bondmaid, the other by the free woman. I want you to look at that, how he said, I desire to be present with you and to change my voice. He understood that just by writing something, someone can not get the tone of, uh, 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 of the writing. You know, and by, if he was there, then he can say, he can tell people and explain things to him and his words would not get twisted. You know, but when you write something to someone, even text them, I text different ones and uh, they got the, they, they didn't get the right understanding because you can never control the tone of a text. We try with emojis and with uh, any, uh, all the things that's on our uh, phones and laptops, computers, we try to uh, control the, the voice and tone of the, the text, but we don't always have that control. Paul was saying that I wish I was there to uh, change the voice, to change my tone in this. Then he said, for it is written, that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bond babe and the other by a free woman. Hallelujah, I want you to see that. One, keep that in you. One was by the bond babe. She was bound. And the other one was by the free woman. Hallelujah. But he was by the, but he who was by the bond woman was born after the flesh. But the other of the free woman was by promise, which things are an allegory. For these are the two, uh, for these are the two covenants: the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth up to bondage, which, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, the, is free, which is the mother of all of us, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou bearing that bearest not. Break forth, break forth, and cry, that thou that tra travailest not. For the, the for the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we brethren. As Isaac was, are the children of promise, but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so, it is now. Nevertheless, what said the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Hallelujah! And I wanted you to see that the bondwoman, those that are bond, uh, born of the bondwoman, the bondwoman represents the flesh. We've been born, but remember, Yahushua said you must be born again. 
the burn woman, we have all these things that are tied to us by nature. You know, so the, he was showing that there's there's two covenants. There's one of the bond woman, but then also one of the free woman. You know, the free. You know, you know, who should die so that we can all be set free. He was born of the, the free woman, which is by spirit, which is by Ruach. Now those, I, it don't matter. I, I want you to understand this. Paul was trying to get the people to understand that flesh and blood you, it is not going to matter in the end. You know, it's all going to come come down to those that are born of the, the, the Ruach. Those that are born in the spirit. Because after a while, flesh can only take you so far by nature. By common sense, we already know these things. Mo most of us can say that we have a friend somewhere that's closer than a brother or a sister. That friend was not born of blood and connected to you in that way. But yet, through spirit, you all have a, they like this, the world likes to say kindred spirits. So that you're connected through the Ruachath. You know, that's what's joining you together. But then you have family members that's born of blood that you can't stand. You, you can't deal with them. Because there's something in your spirit and their spirit that are not kindred. Although you're kin in flesh, in the spirit, there's something that's very disappointing that separates you. And you can't stand to be around them. So Paul was trying to tell him that uh, the bond woman though, uh, is going to be cast out. You know, the, those that are bond, uh, the bond woman and her children. You know, we can take that to Babylon. And her children. The woman, the, ho the whore and her children are going to be cast out. But then, uh, the, uh, the, then all, those, all those that are joined together like I said, I'm not trying to be, uh, I'm just trying to give you truth. You know, we, we need to understand that Christianity was a replacement theology. And, and when you read, you, when you read, the, the, the book was written in Hebrew. It was never, get rid of that Greek stuff, that Latin stuff. It was never the original book. Why would a Hebrew write anything in Latin? or in Greek. You know, if they're not talking to somebody that speaks Latin or Greek, then you're going to speak the language to your, that your own people understand. So that, we, we learned in our Hebrew class this past week, uh, we were talking about uh, the patriarch, um, who was it, uh, Levi. One thing that Levi said before when he was going out, he said, teach your children the letters and the word and Torah but it was so important he said teach your children the letters so that they can read Torah and just inside the letters we, we've been over this each and every letter of the olive bed it tells a story it represents something it's pulling you back it's telling truth it's concrete uh, Hebrew the language don't change it does not change it don't uh, we, we're not. You don't add uh, five words to Hebrew every year like we do the English language. Like we, we, we're not going to add that to the dictionary. It's not going to evolve. It's going. It's concrete. It stays the same. It goes with the Creator of the language. Y'all said I am Yah, and I change not. I'm not going to evolve. You may evolve, but I'm not going to evolve. I do believe that there is a such thing as evolution, but not as we. As science has put me, placed it. Hallelujah. Matthew, look at Matthew 24 and 40. I want you to see this because it said, cast out the bond woman and her son. Matthew 24 and 40 and 41, it says, then two shall be in a field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill the one shall be taken and the other left. I wanted you to see that because see, through the rapture theology, we've been taught that the ones that's taken are being raptured off, going to be with, with, with Yahushua. He's coming back and they're going to be go, go out in outer space and, and they're going to dwell with him. When we, when we pray, the prayer that he taught us to pray, he said, uh, pray this and he said, thy kingdom come. 
not let's take us out in outer space, you know, somewhere so that we can dwell. But you know, he said, pray this, ask this, ask your father this, thy kingdom come, because that's his will. Thy will be done. So when it said, cast out the bun woman and her son, for, for the son of the bun woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So there's not going to be any mingling. The bond woman and the free woman are not going to be mingled together. This is Babylon. This is uh, it, this is his people, his chosen people. This is Israel, Yasharel. I told you all before. I don't like to say the word Israel because when you say Israel, you have ISIS and you have Ra. That comes from uh, uh, Egypt, you know. And El means Elohim, God. So you, when you say that, see. English is full of witchcraft. Full of witchcraft. They taught us all these things so that we can constantly put curses on ourselves. But see, they understood that uh, the tongue is powerful. But we, when we say things, we pronounce curses on ourselves. So we, I, I'm not going to say that I belong to Isis or Ra. I'm Yahshua. I belong to Yah. Hallelujah. Romans 2 1 through 16. I want you to understand what he's talking about in division and dividing uh, uh, the, the bond woman and the free woman because we all have to be born of the Ruach. Romans 2, 1 through 16. <clears throat> Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judges doest the same things, but we are sure that the judgment of Yah is according to truth against them which commit, commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do things and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of Yah, or despisest uh, thou the riches of, of his goodness and for, forbearest and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of Yah leadeth thee to repentance, to turn. It leads you to turn. But after thy hardness and, and, and what is that? Impatient, impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thou thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of Yah. Who will render to every man according to his deeds, to the work that you do, the, the, the things that you are putting your hands to, to them who by uh, patient uh, continence continent and well-doing seek for glory and honor the immorality, eternal life, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first, of the Yahudim first. I want you to see this. Of the Yahudim first, and also of the Gentile. So he's saying that all the, the, the wrath of Yah is going to come on the Yahudim to the Jew first. Just like we're the first fruits. So it don't stop with the Yahudim. They don't stop with the Jews. They don't stop with Israel. You know, it's just to Israel first, and then to the Gentiles. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first, and also to the Gentiles. So also means both are partakers. For there is no respect of persons with Yah. No respect of persons with Yah, but there is a order. He set the order. There's no respect of persons, but there is an order. For as many as have sinned without law shall also, let me, let me stop right there for a minute. In my house, there's order. I have my children. Whoever I give instructions to, that's going to be the one that carry the order. Most of the time, it's the oldest ones. If I tell uh, my oldest son, uh, I want this to be done in the house, you know, and, and things aren't done the way that I say, First, I'm going to come on him. Then I'm going to go on the rest of them for not listening. You know, and this is this is why Yah gave orders. It's not to uh, exclude anybody. 
You know, because he said for the, the word says for Yah so the word that the scripture we all love. For Yah so loved the world, the whole world, which he does, that he gave his only son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, should not perish, but have everlasting life. They should not perish, but they have to believe in him. And those who worship him must worship him in Ruach and in truth. Not a lie. You can't worship him. And, and, and with your own beliefs. You can't worship him out of order. You can't worship him out with your feelings. We went over that last week. You have to worship him in Ruach and in truth. Why? Because the truth is what's going to make you free. Hallelujah. To every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also the Gentile, for there is no respect of persons in Yah. For as many have sinned without law shall also perish without law. So those that sin without law shall also perish without law. And as many have sinned in the law shall be judged in the law. For not the the hearsayers, the, the hearers of the law uh, are just before Yah, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So just because you hear the law, and I, I hear that I need to uh, uh, keep the Shabbat. Cool that shit. I hear and I agree that uh, I need to honor my, my mother and my father. I hear that I should have not have no other Elohim before him. But I'm not doing it. I'm putting other stuff before them. And I, I'm allowing other things to distract me from him. You know, that means I'm not, I'm, I'm hearing, but I'm not doing. I have to be, I have to be found doing when he comes. He's gonna look. Uh, I want to be like that good and faithful steward. And when he came, uh, he found the good and faithful servants. They were doing. He said, uh, "Enter in, enter in." You know. But then the one that was unfaithful, and he had him tied up and bound and cast out. Hallelujah. But the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law. These having not the law are, are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the written of the law written in their hearts, because it's in their hearts. Their continents also bearing witness, and their thoughts the mean the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when Yah shall judge the secrets of men by Yahusha HaMashiach according to my Masur. Hallelujah. Galatians 3 and 8. And the scripture, and the scripture foreseeing that Yah would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel, preached before the gospel unto Abram, Abram, Abraham, saying, and, and thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham, with our faithful father. I wanted to point that out because Yahushua said that salvation is of the Yahudim. Salvation is of the Jews. And Paul, is re Paul didn't say anything different than what Yahushua said. So in this he's saying, uh, Galatians 3 and 8, he's saying, in the scripture, for seeing that Yah would justify the heathen through faith. You know, even the heathen, the outcasts, the ones that, uh, the, the, the lawless, that's what heathen, uh, the heathen is. You know, through faith, preach before the gospel of Abraham, saying, and thee, all nations, so he's saying, in Abraham, all nations, he told them, and you, all nations are going to be saved. You know, and the reason I wanted this pointed out is because when I mean replacement theology, I'm talking about Christianity. We want to say that every, they taught us that everybody must become a Christian. Y'all never said that. It's nowhere in your book. I don't care what interpretation you've got. You might find the word Christian, but when you look up the, what it's really saying and you put it in context, it's nowhere in the book that says you have to become a Christian. I'm talking about the real book, that you have to become a Christian in order to uh, be with Yah. No, salvation is, Yahushua, Jesus said, 
salvation is of the Jews, of the Yahudim. And then right here it's saying that it's reiterated. See, all scripture, even the so-called New Testament, it's only, it's really just Old Testament. It's a renewed, it's renewing the covenant. Because we don't believe in testament. Testament is something different. It's a Greek word. You know, but we don't believe in testament. You know, we believe in covenant. And what this is saying, everything that Paul preached, Christ and Hamashiach preached, everything that they that, that they preached was just old, uh, what it was Torah. What we call Old Testament. You won't find anything new in it. You can always point back and find it in Torah. So he's, he's just uh, quoting with Y'all told Abraham, I think in uh, maybe the, the 15th chapter of Genesis or something like that. He said, And thee shall all nations be blessed, so they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Y'all told him, And you, everybody's going to be blessed. Salvation is going to be of you. This is where Yahushua, Jesus, got it from. That's why he said, Salvation is of the Jews. John 3 1 through 8. There was a man of the Pharisees, nicknamed Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. He wanted to go there secretly. He didn't want anybody to see him. He was a Pharisee. Pharisees, uh, they, they have pride. They, want, they, they have a self-righteous spirit. So they, uh, they, 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 he wanted to go to Jesus to get truth. He knew that Jesus had the truth. He had the truth, but he wanted to go there in secret. He didn't want nobody to see him coming. So he came under the cloak of the darkness. So that, so that nobody uh, he can get to him and ask the question that he should have already known by him being a Pharisee. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher. Come from Yah, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest. I, I seen the miracles. You healed the sick. You made the blind see. I've seen all these miracles that you do. And we know that you're a, you're a great teacher. I even said great teacher. Except God be with you. You know, so you wouldn't do it if God wasn't with you. And Jesus answered him and says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Yah. So he's letting them know that you are, except you be uh, born of the spirit, the Ruach. You got to be born again because that's the only way you're going to be born again. You cannot see the kingdom of Yah. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Asking a rhetorical question. Yahushua answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of what? The spirit, the Ruach, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yah. So that bond woman and those that are of the bond woman is not going to enter in because she's not going to be joined heirs. They're not going to be joined to those that are heirs to the uh, to his kingdom. Marvel not. Wait, no. Seth the man be, okay. Uh, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit of the Ruach is Ruach. Marvel not that I said unto thee, uh, uh, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listens, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the, the Ruach. So he's letting them know you've got to be born in the Ruach. Oh, that's the only way to become a Air, you have to be born in the Ruach. Let's go to uh, chapter, where are we at now? Go to Romans 8 and 1. I wish I had more time to go all through through this. We're going to have to start, uh, I guess I'm going to have to start going through uh, Paul's writings more. Because it's, start, it's, uh, it's a lot of confusion as uh, people are starting to try to teach more of Paul. And we've always been confused uh, with Paul's writings. But now pe people are usurping themselves as teachers and mores and pastors. And, and they weren't called. But yet they want to uh, put themselves in that position 
and they're taking the word, twisting it, wrestling it to their own pleasures and uh, to others' destructions because they don't have understanding. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Hamashiach, Yahusha, who, who, walk, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Ruach. Those that are not walking after the flesh, but after the Ruach. Those that are not always trying to please their own flesh. Always looking at how can, uh, how can I benefit in my flesh. And when I say that, I mean like, what feels good to me? What sounds good to me? What tastes good to me? Instead of walking after the Ruach. And they quench the Ruach. They quench the Ruach. The Ruach saying, don't go this way. Don't say that. Don't tell this person off. Don't cut this person off. Don't do this. Don't do that. But they're not walking after the uh, flesh. Uh, the, the Ruach, they're walking after the flesh. For the law of the Ruach of Christ, the law of the Spirit of Christ, Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. I want you to understand that the law of sin and death is uh, what they did was that, that, that brought on the sacrificial uh, that it was talking about the sacrificial laws not all laws that's why it's being specific right here it's saying what law the law of sin and death Yahushua freed us from that you don't have to die you don't have to kill something in vain anymore because he was the ultimate sacrifice but that don't free you from the rest of the uh, from the rest of the laws that are, are uh, regarding you you know, there's so many laws, but then you have your, the laws that are for women, laws that are for men, law that, laws that are for priests. So all the laws didn't apply to everybody anyway. But that's the way that the enemy tried to fool us. For the law of the, the Ruach, the Spirit of Christ, uh, has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law, for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, the flesh made it weak. Yah sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. So Yah sent his son and, and, and wrapped up in something that looked like sinful flesh. He became a man. You know, he manifested himself so, he, uh, so that we can see, he can be able to feel all the things that we feel, uh, feel and so that we can touch him. So that we can see him, hold him. You know, so and so that we can understand him, and so that he can under, prove that he understands us. You know, so he. he uh, um, where am I? Four. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, after the ruach. He came down. He died so that we can walk not after the flesh, but after the ruach. For they, he showed us how to do things. He lived a righteous life. He was the sinful, I mean, sinless uh, uh, sacrifice. Uh, the, the sheep, the lamb without spot or blemish. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. If you, though you, you want to know somebody that's after the flesh, what kind of lifestyle uh, are they living? You know, what are they always, what makes them happy? If you want to know if you are walking after the flesh, what makes you happy? What makes you smile when you get up in the morning? What makes you uh, feel like, oh, you had a good day at the end of the day or you had a bad day? Can you go and, uh, and first thing in the morning, can you say this is a day that God made, I will rejoice and be glad in it? At the end of the day, can you say that uh, all these things will work against me, but I'm still going to praise God? And it don't matter uh, how gloomy my day was, I'm still going to praise Yah. Yeah. Or do you allow, do you uh, uh, put your emphasis on everything that the enemy, uh, every picture that he painted? You know, that everything that, oh, well, you have, we have this going on. We have this going on. You have this illness. You have, uh, you, you're going through this uh, uh, on your job. Whatever it is that he can throw your way, uh, are you walking after the flesh or are you walking after his spirit? When you, when you can answer that, then you'll know which way you're walking. Romans 6. For, the, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal minded, because the carnal mind is enmity 
against God, against Yah. It's his enemy. The carnal mind, the fleshly mind is always trying to please itself. That's always worried about itself that rejects truth. It's the enemy because Yah is the truth. So when you reject truth, you reject his covenant, you reject uh, his loving kindness, you're rejecting Yah. But then we have those that say, oh, uh, I, I love Yah and I, I'm a good person and all this, but still not doing the things that are pleasing to him. For it is not subject to the law of Yah. So let me read that again. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Yah, for it is not subject to the, to the law of Yah. Neither indeed can be. The, the mind, the, the, the fleshly mind cannot even, it can't be subject to Yah. So then, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yah. If you're walking in the flesh, if you are a lesson after the flesh, if you want to please the flesh all the time, you cannot please Him. But ye are, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the, the Ruach, the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of Yah dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Yah, the Spirit of Mashiach, he is none of his. If you don't have his Ruach inside of you, you don't belong to him. If you don't have it, you don't belong to him. If you're not, and you know you have it when you're walking according to, the, to his Ruach. When you're walking in his spirit, you have it. And if Christ, Hamashiach, be in you, the body is dead of sin. The, the, the body is dead because of sin. But the Ruach, the spirit, is life because of righteousness. So if he's in you, then you're going to give up your fleshly desires for him. It's not going to be a contest. It's not going to be a, uh, anything close. I, when I pray for myself, I always pray that y'all uh, becomes my first and foremost. I don't want anything close to it. I don't want anybody to be able to look at me and say, well, I think this could be close to him serving out. I don't want there to be no confusion. I want there to be a fine line who I worship, who I serve. I don't want there to be no confusion in that place. And we, I, I can't be confused myself. I have to know. You have to know who you worship. Uh, if there's a, if you, uh, one, one thing that we've been hearing is when in doubt, leave it out. If there's even uh, uh, something that looks bad, if it looks negative, if it looks like, if it's questionable, you know, whether it belongs to him or not, leave it out. If you have, uh, if there's a tug in your heart saying, don't do this, it's probably the Ruach. If it's, uh, you feel that discernment, you know, saying, no, don't go that way. Don't talk to this person. It's probably the Ruach. That's how you walk in the Ruach. That's how you walk in the Spirit. But when you're just saying, oh, no, I didn't see nothing, nobody told me nothing, you're quenching it. People have lost their lives because they quenched the spirit. They quenched his Ruach. The Ruach said, don't go this way. Don't go inside this bank. Don't go inside that store. Stay home. It's a Shabbat. Then they go anyway. Then uh, all of a sudden, an uh, active shooter goes inside the store and starts shooting up everybody. You know who's going to be the number one target? The one that's claiming that, uh, that, that that's been close to even that that's been close to keeping the covenant. That's gonna be the main target. Because it, it, once you start uh it willingly messing up, and we're not gonna be perfect. Now, don't get me wrong, because see the enemy will come and try to twist things and say, Oh, nobody's perfect, nobody's gonna try to but yeah, who should told us to do it? He said, uh, be be therefore holy, even as your father in heaven is also holy. You know, we're supposed to strive for perfection. So, yes, uh, there's things I'm going to mess up on. But when I'm willing to uh, take that chance and I know that, oh, oh, he knows my heart. He's going to forgive me. He's going to allow this to happen because he loves, oh, he loves the little children. I'm one of his little children. You know, I'm responsible for everything I do. Every thought I make, everything that I take in me, everything I give out of me, I'm I'm responsible for it. When I accept it, when I'm saying take in me anything I accept, you're responsible for it. Which one am I on? But if the spirit of him that is raised up 
that raised up Jesus, Yahusha, is from the dead dwell in you. That same Ruach dwells in you. He that raised up Yahusha from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Ruach that dwelleth in you. There, we were talking yesterday, there's only one Ruach. One Ruach HaKodesh, one Holy Spirit. And when we all share his Holy Spirit, you know, we're sharing the same Holy Spirit that Yahushua had. He, he was around with him. So he knows everything. You know, he knows what, it's the same Spirit that Yahushua, this, 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 some of y'all should be shouting on this. The same Ruach that was inside him is inside you. It's not a different one. So the same Ruach that knew him, that was inside him intimately, is inside you intimately. You know, that's that's powerful. That's powerful. Sometimes we can we can go on the outside and say, oh, you know what? This is the house that Michael Jackson lived in. Oh, people would start shouting and wanting to fall out. I'm inside the same house. This is the, the this road has all the stars, the stars wrote their name here. And, and, and the, the celebrities, they, they became stars and wrote their name on the ground. Oh, wow. Or the, uh, the, uh, the, this, this, this celebrity's going around giving their autograph. You're, you're, you're taking, uh, you're, you're in the same space or in the same place as a man. And you rejoice. But I'm telling you that the, 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 the Ruah that was in Yahusha, that was in Christ, that was in Jesus. It's inside of you. It's inside of all of us. We share him. There shouldn't be any mistake. And when I first received his ruah, I remember I was like, I'm going to protect this thing. I remember the day I, I received, I, I said, I'm going to protect this. You know, I was, uh, I went, uh, I, was, I went to work and I was praying. I received it. Let me say this. I received it with the evidence of tongues. A lot of Israelites don't want to hear that. A lot of other folks don't want to hear that. I received it with the evidence of tongues. I knew that I knew that I knew I was filled with his ruah. It was an overflow. How do I know a cup is full of water? Um, if I'm going to be technical, you know, if that water is not overflowing, you can have somebody that, that can uh, scientifically, uh, scientifically come and present an argument whether the cup is full or not. It can look like it's at the rim. But if I pulled out some different types of measurements, I can, so there's be different arguments. Somebody will say, no, it's not full. You can still get this amount more inside of it. But when it's overflowing, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. And I don't just mean with tongues. I'm just, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm one that anything that he has for me, I am not going to reject it. I don't care what anybody say. Because I know, I know who I am. I know, uh, you know if you're for real or not. Uh, it don't matter. I say like when it comes down to it, my salvation is not content, content, contingent on you all. It's on me. What I, when I stand before him, he's going to look, it's going to, the conversation going to be between us. You know, nobody else going to be able to say, well, I saw this or, or didn't know. He's, he's going to say, no, nah, he, he, you, you was faking. And you know what? I, I'm not going to be able to lie. Or he'll say, no, nah, you, you were for real. Enter in, my good and faithful servant. You didn't hold back in. You weren't afraid. You weren't afraid what they're going to say. You didn't hide it. You, you, you went ahead and you used the gifts that I gave you, that I put inside you. You used it for the benefit of the kingdom. Enter in. Which one do you want? That you, you, you shelled up? Because you were so afraid to allow God to use you. You were so afraid to go talk to somebody. So afraid to go witness to someone. So afraid to go pray with someone. So afraid to take down your pride and ask a question. Sometimes that, that's going to be one of the number one things that's going to keep folks from entering in. Because they're going to say, they're gonna, well, I didn't know. When he said ask. 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 I'm telling you all, if I, if, I, if I preach something or teach something you don't understand, ask me. I don't know. You all know that it's been times that we have services where someone asked, I'm up here preaching, someone stood up and asked during the sermon, 
We've stopped answering it. You know, that's what we're supposed to do. This is y'all's service. You know, uh, one, one day we're going to have to get back. I, I like when Ezra was uh, in the book of Nehemiah, Ezra was up reading, uh, reading this, uh, the books. And uh, uh, Nehemiah and some of the rest of them was going, as he was reading, they were going out into the assembly, the congregation, causing people to understand what he was reading. During when he was reading, that's what we're supposed to get back to. Yah. Hallelujah. But I don't want to neglect anything. I want everything that's going to help me to do this work. I'm not going to get, I want my Swiss Army knife to have many different things that I can pull out. You know, I want everything in my arsenary that, uh, whatever, I, I, I don't care. In some ways, I, I look at the hoarders, you know, I was looking at the show the other day about this hoarder, and she said she believed in a, the apocalypse coming, and she had everything, she didn't throw anything out. You know, she said, it's gonna be some people coming for some pieces of wood. She actually, she found people's fences and just took it to her. She had a big old, like a, a, a land, a lot of acres. And she just took it out there. She said, somebody might need this one day. You know, so uh, I'm, I like that with his gifts. I don't want to neglect anything. To say, oh, this is not of Yah. Try it. Oh, taste and see that Yah's, Yah's good. Blessed are those that trust in him. So I'm going to try it to see. I'm going I'm to test it. Hallelujah. And so far, I haven't found the things that, uh, if it's of him, I'm keeping it. If it's of, if even things that people tell me, if it's of him, I keep it. I don't care if it's a child. But if it's not of him, I'm rejecting it and getting rid of it. Hallelujah. I know them. The Bible says, know them that labor among you. We got to know each other. Where am I at? But at the ruach of him that raised Yahushua from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Mashiach from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the Ruach that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. You don't know, you no longer have to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye live after the spirit, but if ye live through the spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many that are led by the spirit of Yah, the Ruach of Yah, they are the sons of Yah. Those that are led by his Ruach, are you led by his Ruach? If you're led by his Ruach, you belong to him. Does it say who? It doesn't say uh, only the Yahudim? Does it say only the Gentiles? It says whosoever Whosoever, hallelujah, for as many that are led by the Spirit of Yah, as many, they are the sons of Yah. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. So it's not, we're not going to live in flesh again. We're not living by the flesh again because the flesh will lead you to fear and to death. But ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father because we are now adopted I want you all to understand this because see a lot of us uh, you have a lot of Israelites that want to take oh I'm an Israelite for granted remember this Yaakov Jacob was not born Yashareel he was not born he gained that through favor through faith he held on and he said Yah said you're no longer going to be called Yaakov or Jacob, you're now going to be called Yasharel. When you hold on to him, you can all you, all you have to do is just get a grip to truth. Get a grip to his ruach. Let it dwell inside you and then he will change you. He had to change us all. Because see, this is talking to everybody. He said, when I say it to one, I say it to all. And then he said that, for as many as led by the spirit of Yah, they are the sons of Yah. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. He is your Father. Who's the Father? 
Yeah. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yah. If you belong to him, then your spirit, the spirit that's inside you is going to bear witness that you are one of his. You are marked. If you, if you belong to him, you're going to keep covenant. You are going to keep his laws and statutes. You're going to try to do everything to please him and you will be sealed with his name. Because my children have my name. That's how I know. I understand. I understand this completely. I understand law because I study law. I understand adoption because I studied adoption. It's common sense. The spirit itself bear witness, bear witness with, the, with our spirit that we are the children of Yah. And if children, then heirs, and heir, then heirs, heirs of Yah, and joint heirs with Mashiach. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. And I'm going to stop right there. I want you to understand that when it comes to adoption, we have all been brought in. We all, he, we, you, if not one of us is going to make it just by blood. Yes, we're blood to Jacob. We're blood to that. But all, we all have to become Yasharel, whether you believe it or not. Now we are, uh, don't, don't get me wrong there, we, we're, we're Yasharel because that was our father. You know, by birthright, yes, there. But I want you to understand that Yah, we're, we're, we're here in America. We're here because there was uh, because of sin sin is transgression transgression separates you from Yah nothing can be separated from his love but transgression will separate you I love my children when they're not you know but I have to separate us sometimes sometimes they have to go uh, in, in their room and think about things you know, there's a, there's a consequence to when they're doing something off. You know, but at the same time, I want you to get this. When it comes to adoption, all my children that have my name, when uh, we, we have a covenant, I have to sign a covenant that all my children that have my name, if something happens to me, you know, they, they, they're heirs. They're heirs to, all, to, to, to my dynasty. And I'm going to say I have a dynasty because I know who I am and Yah. They're heirs. They're heirs together. So they inherit what I have. They're going to share what I have. And I'm going to share with them. All those that have my name. And that's what Yah saying. If my children who are called by my name and when they humble themselves or pray, he was talking about us today. Today. When they humble themselves and pray and, and they repent, they turn from their evil ways, turn from rejecting covenant, rejecting uh, my commandments, rejecting my laws and my Torah. When they turn and turn back, turn from what? Turn from going away and turn back to me. Then will I hear from him, from the Shabbat. He said, then will I hear. And, I, and, and then he told us uh, uh, in, in another passage, he said, uh, I will restore to you the years that the canker worms and the pommel worms have eaten away. You know, I'm going to make you famous where, where you were made ashamed. Y'all wants to raise you up. Y'all wants to raise you up. He wants to do some things for us, you know, as heirs and joint heirs. He wants to do some things for us as mishpaka, as family. 